Hello again, Tony Wright, First Love Christian Church, FLCC, AB Wright Ministry. This is that 90-day Bible study. We're on day 73. We're in the book of St. Luke, uh, the gospel according to St. Luke, and we're uh, going to be going through the ninth chapter. Well, when we finished yesterday, we finished with the birth of John the Baptist, and it concluded with him growing and waxing strong in the spirit. And starting today's reading, Luke lays out the story of the birth of Jesus, and his account has all the details. And it's by far the most conclusive of all the gospel writing for this narrative. Now, the background of why Joseph and Mary happened to go to Bethlehem because of where he needed to go to pay taxes, all that's in there. Now, since taxes were to be paid in the you know, home city of their birth lineage. And Joseph, remember, he was out of the house of David. Now, Mary was almost due when they traveled. And she went into labor while they were there. And this is the only gospel that captures the narrative about wrapping the baby in swaddling clothing, lying him in a manger. And it told that the reason was that there was no room for him in uh, them in the end, right? Hey, everybody was back in Bethlehem at the same time to pay taxes. It's like trying to find a hotel room during the NCAA uh, playoff week. <laughs> Good luck with that. Now, Luke, he writes about the angel visiting the shepherds and telling them that a savior is born in the city of David. And that it was Christ the Lord. And the angel told them that they would find the baby lying in a manger. And boy, a host of heavenly angels appeared and praised God and said, glory to God, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And when the angels left, the shepherds hurried into the city to see the baby. And they told everyone uh, what the angels had said about the baby. And when the shepherds left, they were overjoyed about all they had experienced. And then... There were some Jewish customs, you know, that had to be uh, taken care of, that had to take place. Like, you know, like the baby being circumcised on the eighth day and being uh, given the official name. Now, for boys, it was eight days that they were given their official name. And the mother had then to wait 40 days after birth of boys, 80 days for girls, before they could go into the temple or participate in any kind of religious ceremonies for that matter. Then they could go to the temple and present the baby back to the Lord. You know, if the baby belonged to the Lord, they'd give him back. And they had to make sacrifice for the child. And did you notice that the offering that they gave was the offering of what they call the offering of the poor? You know, it was a pair of turtle doves. It wasn't a lamb, it was a young pigeon. And it was Luke that told of the man named Simeon that had been told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before seeing the Lord's Christ. And he was led by the Spirit into the temple and there he did see Jesus. And he proclaimed that his eyes had seen salvation. Now, uh, he said it was one that would lighten the Gentiles and would be the glory of his people Israel. And after the prophetess Anna had also seen the child and praised him, the family returned back to Nazareth. And the Bible says that the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was filled with wisdom and grace of God was upon him. And now the family returned to Jerusalem every year as the custom was for the feast and, and to pay taxes. And the year that Jesus was 12, they went there. And after the normal amount of time, they left. But Jesus wasn't with them, with them and they didn't realize it until they had traveled for a whole day. Now, you know, it, probably when they were preparing to, you know, bed down for rest and they were going to get him ready for, you know, bed, they realized he wasn't even there. Oh, my goodness, panic time. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, though. Jewish boy, he became a man when he was 12 years of age. And it was at that time that he became a son of the law, which meant that he had to be responsible to meet his individual obligation for the law. So at 12, Jesus went with them to the Passover. And surely it was not through carelessness that they didn't miss him, right? There were always huge masses of people that traveled together when they went to events like this. And it was usual for the women to leave in the caravan and start out much earlier than the men because they generally travel more slowly. Hey, don't get mad at me. I'm just talking about what their customs were, right? And the men, they travel later and they travel faster. Then the two groups would meet uh, when the evening encampment time was reached, right? The, the place they were going to camp for the evening. And since this was Jesus' first Passover, Joseph, he likely thought it was Mary, that the child was with Mary. And Mary likely thought that the child was with Joseph. You know, kind of like when you're in the store, and you think the child is with the mom and uh, the mom thinks the child is with the dad until they hear the thing saying, clean up on aisle 12. <laughs> you know the story. And then uh, at the evening camp, they realized that Jesus was missing. 
So they had to return to Jerusalem to search for him. Now, during the Passover season, the season it was custom for the Sanhedrin, you know, the Supreme Tribunal, to meet in the public in the temple court to discuss in the presence of all that would listen, religious and theological questions. And it was there that they found Jesus. So anyway, after returning, and no doubt they had looked in all the expected places, you know, they probably checked it, you know, their friends' houses and all their family's places and all the places that any kids might hang out or, or might have hung out during the uh, Passover time and nothing, but they found him in the temple. And uh, they were probably going there to pray, you know, <laughs> to say, oh, Lord, help me find where he is. But he was there sitting in the midst of the religious uh, teachers and the leaders and listening and asking questions. And everybody was amazed at the understanding and the answers that he was given. And Mary bore like any mom. She laid into him. Son, why did you do that? You know, your father and I were worried sick looking for you. But Jesus said, hey, why were you looking for me? Don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? Now, <laughs> needless to say, uh, they were really a little bit confused about that one. But Jesus went with them back to Nazareth and he stayed under their care. And he grew stronger in wisdom and standing and he gained favor with God and with man. Now, Luke also spoke about John the Baptist's ministry. And he pointed out that uh, this was a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy about the voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. And, and Herod, the Tetra, was already upset with, you know, John about him calling uh, Herod out for marrying his bro brother Philip's wife, right? Herodias. And, and he just added this call for repentance to the list of reasons why he was going to put John in prison. But before John was in prison, he baptized Jesus. And Luke also notes of the dove descending upon Jesus and the voice sounding from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And after being baptized, Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness and is tempted of the devil. But he shut the devil down on all attempts. Then when Jesus came back to Galilee, he taught and he preached and all that heard him spread the word about him. But as we've seen before, those in his own city just did not accept what he was saying, not because of what he was saying, but because of who he, who was saying it. You know, they asked, isn't it Joseph's son? And, and, and Jesus told him that no prophet is accepted in his own country. Then Jesus continued his ministry of healing and casting out devils. And Jesus consistently asked those who were healed not to tell anyone. But that just wasn't happening. They would go and tell everybody. And when the devil would say, uh, try to say who Jesus was, he would silence them and cast them out. And, and afterward, Jesus went onto a boat that belonged to Simon Peter and was taken out into water where he spoke to the crowd. And afterward, he told Simon to move into the deep and cast the net. Now, Simon told Jesus that they had fished all night and nothing had been caught there. But he would do it just because Jesus had asked. And when he did, they caught so many fish that the boat almost sank. And they called a friend over with their boat and it was filled too. And Jesus told them, uh, you know, told them all, Peter, James, John, to come with him and they would become fishers of men. Now, Luke, he tells of Jesus healing the leper and the man that had palsy, you know, some paralysis. And then Jesus called Levi or Matthew, the tax collector. Uh, as a follower. And of course, the scribes and Pharisees, they tried to chastise Jesus for, for healing on the Sabbath. But Jesus showed how hypocritical they had been by asking whether it was lawful to do good or evil on the Sabbath. And Luke names a list of 12 that Jesus chooses as apostles. And his list occurs much earlier in his writing than the others, than the other writers, right? Then Jesus goes on to conduct other teachings and he heals the centurion's uh, servant and he raises a man from the dead. And Luke tells of John sending two of his disciples to Jesus to ask if he was the one or should John be looking for another? And Jesus uh, had continued to heal and to preach. Then he told those disciples to go back, tell John of the things that they had seen. And anyone that does not deny or reject him is blessed. And then he told those around him 
that there is no person born of a woman that is greater than John the Baptist. And Jesus continued to go through the cities and preaching and teaching, teaching in parables, you know, like the parable of the sword and the, the parable of the candlelight. And Jesus, he empowered this 12 and he sent them forth to preach and to heal. Now, Luke also captures the story of the feeding of the 5,000 and the story of the transfiguration and where Jesus warns the disciples about his uh, pending death. And he, uh, he also tells about Jesus correcting the disciples on what it really means to be first or the greatest. And boy, he told them about the high cost of discipleship. And anyone that looks back after they put their hand to the plow is not worthy of the kingdom. Boy, speaking of looking back, that's what we will not be doing. We're looking forward. Right now, we're looking forward to getting up out of here. But we'll be back, though. Check us out. Check us out tomorrow. And as a matter of fact, until then, you just keep reading this word and you keep checking us out on social media, you know, on your favorite platform. And please tell your friends and tell your neighbors at FLCC, hey, we got our hands on the plow, baby. We're taking ministry back to the first love. Peace.